so good to see you all. Now, my name is Dave Warnke, and uh, I'm just one humble third of the show. Would you please go crazy for the better half of the show? They are two beautiful people, the Sass Twins themselves. Please give it up for the two and only, Jess Perkins and Matt Stewart. <laughs> What a pleasure. Hello. Yeah. So hey. good to be here. All right. <laughs> Dave looked at me like, what the fuck are you talking about? You don't feel good to be here, Dave? No, the rapture supports are so loud. I was like, what the fuck is Matt saying? Over there? <laughs> like, uh, do you say it's good to be here? Yeah. Yeah. It is good to be here. Okay, right. just relaying that in case you couldn't hear that either. So, Guys, I'm just wanting to say it's, it's good to be here. Um, <laughs> I got claps. Fuck you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a round of applause if you feel good to be here. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Um, it's. It is. Did someone just say it's good to be here? Great. Well. Well, how well, look, well, now we've heard his opinion. How's everyone? You? You're great. great. Oh, well, well you got. You got outdid there, sir. Um, <laughs> how are you going to beat great? Good luck. No, I'm just pretty good. Oh, pretty fuck. good. All right. No, no, but she's honest. Yeah. And I like that. Is anyone feeling pretty shit? Good. That's good. <laughs> That's good. There we go. Good. Bottle it up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm fine. Uh, so Jess has already started drinking, so that's a good, good sign for the show. Yeah. Matt, abstaining because you are reporting today, which I appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, I never drink and report. You know that. <laughs> I know that about me. That's one of the, the things. The I live by like, rule. But, 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 oh, Jesus. Did you nearly fall off the chair? No, I just I, I ran out of momentum in that sentence. And um, <laughs> that's I good because you're doing gibberish. most of the talking today. Yes. So that's good, isn't it? We're talking um, earlier because Matt and I are obviously the SAS twins, um, but Dave and I don't really have a title when it's Matt's report. Um, so, Dave, what, what can we be? Uh, babe bros. Don't touch me. Okay. <laughs> um, babe I mean, bros. Look, I know that would have looked a bit weirder because as I was looking at you, I said babe and I started leaning in. <laughs> babe. I think, I think I saved it with bros. <laughs> I didn't say it. What, what, okay, what do no, you No, no, no. Babe bros it is. All right, let's do it. How do babe bros op operate? Because sass twins are sassy. What the fuck are babe bros? <laughs> Just a lot of this. Yeah. Do we call him Babe a lot too? <laughs> babe, do go on. <laughs> he hated that. <laughs> then it stays. Uh, Matt, what about you and I? Do we have a duo name? Sick. No. <laughs> Remember, Wait. we said no more C words. Yeah. <laughs> But Jess, you, Jess, you're doing a lot of shooting down here with not putting out true, any of your own true, ideas. True, Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the supportive buddies. <laughs> babe bros it is. OK. okay. Um, We're all babe bros, and it is babe and good to be here <laughs> at the uh, European uh, Beer Cafe. Now, uh, give us a round of applause if you've ever heard the podcast before. <laughs> Thank you. Now, give us a slightly more awkward applause if you've never heard the podcast before. That's okay. That's all right. Tentative. Tentative applause. And, and that's fine because you'd expect us to pick on you. That's fine. A welcome. This is a safe place. I feel like that is either the highest ratio of people that have heard the show before or some of you are fucking lying. That, yeah. is, that could be happening right now. But anyway, if you haven't heard the show before, what's going to happen here is one of us this week, Matt, is going to uh, do a report on a topic that the other two the Bay Bros here, have no idea what it's going to be about. And, uh, Matt, have you, have you prepared a question to get us on to said yes, topic? Yes, I have. Uh, Look, it yes. sounds like you haven't prepared a question. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no that was me playing it up. No, actually, I just wanted to say, because, you know, last time... Ooh, hello. <laughs> no, last Ooh. time I did a live report, um, I ended up doing... I misjudged a little bit and did a really sad... <laughs> Report for Christ Christmas what, what time. Was the, what was the title of that episode? The five saddest murders around <laughs> Christmas ever. No, it was the five Christmas time mysteries that just happened to be oh, sad. I want to reinforce that mysteries. Like, like I'd accidentally misremembered the title of the show. I do remember that it was called that, but it was very, very sad. Anyway, you know that so one. Any, anyway, this time around, I'm like, I'm only going to put up because we get these uh, choices voted on, right? So I'm like, I want to put up three happy and joyous topics, right? So they have to choose that, right? So I put up three happy and joyous topics. 
Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, like, I thought I did, but I actually put up two happy... Um, <laughs> And joyous topics and one, one kind of sad fucked one and um... I wonder sad... which one they voted for! Uh, about 80% uh, went for the... Went for the, went for the, went for the sad death. Sad death So, none. 80% with a 20% margin of error. So... Yeah, not a lot of life lovers uh, on our Patreon apparently, but anyway. So the question this week, it's only vague. Any, any patrons in? Anyone vote on this topic? <laughs> it's a resounding nah. <laughs> nah, I checked with all the others. Nah. So the question this week, it's only vaguely related to the topic it is, because you don't, won't know the topic, I don't think. The question is, which state in America was bought off the Russians in 1876? Dave. I reckon Dave will Dave. probably know. So Jess, I want you to have a go. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you genuinely want me to have yeah. a guess. I mean, there's only 50 to choose from. <laughs> Did you know there were 50? <laughs> oh, is that true? 51, that is absolutely untrue. Because <laughs> I will be in the cold, cold ground before I recognise Missouri. <laughs> Simpsons! Already in, already in Simpsons. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Dave, do you have any idea? Uh, no, just, just say... No, I don't want to guess! Can you, are you worried that you'll say Los Angeles yeah. or something? <laughs> Go on, Dave. Do you know? Let's just move it, on. I mean, is it Alaska? Yes. All right. <laughs> so is the, it? Yes. <laughs> so the, this I week... I mean, it's the one that Sarah Palin can see from her house. Yes. What, no, I mean, her house is in Alaska. <laughs> so, of course, she can see... <laughs> Of course she can see uh, Factually I mean, she accurate, just, uh, she just comedically look, flawed. Okay. <laughs> look down at her feet and she can see it, yes. I meant she can see Russia from her house. Fuck. The 51st state, am I right? <laughs> so this, uh, this week's episode is about uh, uh, an American wildlife photographer named Carl McCunn, who died. <laughs> Sorry, uh, one more time. One more time for the name. Carl Sur surname specifically. McCunn. 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 <laughs> McCunn. I think I'm starting to realise why they voted for this one. Um, <laughs> McCunny, all right. That's so, pretty good. Uh, you bloody funny McCunny. That's good. That's, that's fun. That's fun. Stop. Wow, look at that already. We're having fun. So, and he you, hasn't even died yet. Yeah. And that's when it really kicks in. All right. So he will die? Uh, yes. Spoilers. We'll all die, Dave. Um, <laughs> Yeah, spoiling my life as well. Ah, uh, no, the topic's called The Death of Carl McCunn. Yeah, right. <laughs> and when you, when you put that in the hat, you thought, great, there's three happy suggestions for everyone. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? I need something else happy and cheerful Look, for our live honest, show. I mean, I only, only, only browsed it. I only very briefly skimmed through, um, and it sounded like And the fun. word death didn't yeah. give it away at all. So you, you skimmed through the title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The McCunn. All right, yeah, I'm in. Carl is a great name. Okay. All right, well, let's see how you can bury this so show this, in the ground. This is the story of his demise in the inhospi inhospitable <laughs> Alaskan wild. Seems like you uh, skimmed through that word as well. <laughs> <laughs> I said all the important bits. You knew what I meant. Uh, so this cheerful topic was suggested by listener Matt Douche. <laughs> uh, Matt Douche in tonight. <laughs> He's from the south of England. It'd be a, it'd be Never a bloody know. good effort. Never know. <laughs> it would be fucking impressive. <laughs> Jeez, not just imp that guy really would have been impressed, but no, not to be. Sorry about that. <laughs> so let's talk about. I would love to talk more about Matt Douche, but I don't know anything about him. Uh, let's talk about Carl Funny McCunny. Jeez, that's disrespectfully died not that long ago. Um, <laughs> I, I'd just like to ask the audience: Are you familiar with the work of Mc Funny McCunny? <laughs> Any, no any McCunny heads in? <laughs> Sorry to do all the cliche call and response stuff early. I say McCunny, you say... <laughs> <laughs> Born in West Germany uh, while his dad Donovan McCunny, McCunn, uh, was... <laughs> <laughs> was serving there in the US Army. Carl grew up in San Antonio. I've Skipped a lot there, anyway. He, was, he grew up in Texas, doesn't matter. Let's get to the death. He served... 
served in the US Navy for about four years after he got through college. <laughs> How long is the death going to be? Nah, look. <laughs> a 45 minute long death. Matt's going to act it out. By the 1970s, he'd moved to Alaska. Oh, topical. We were just talking about Alaska. Uh, living in the city. <laughs> living in the city of Fairbanks. Show, the people who don't know showbiz won't realise that I set that all up. <laughs> he winked at me. It's so good because before we walked out, Matt went, I'm feeling a bit flat. <laughs> and I went, I reckon you'll be right once you're out there. Uh, to give you a picture of uh, Mr McCartney, uh, for those of you who don't know what he looks like, anyone here not know? <laughs> Uh, he had he had curly reddish blonde hair, and he was a big unit, standing about six foot two tall, and about 110 kilos. So big, big man. <laughs> I really, I really want you guys to picture him before you get sad about him dying. I want you to, <laughs> I want really you to feel some attachment, some yeah. connection to yeah. our man McCunny. Uh, as well as his Navy experience, he also was a reasonably skilled outdoorsman. And in 1976, he spent about five months living solo. Uh, in the tough Alaskan wilderness. Um, so he was, he was no chump, he, was, he knew what he was doing out there uh, and he was pr pretty familiar with the area, right? Where he ended what? up dying. <laughs> <laughs> he was familiar with all of Alaska. Yeah. The area. Well, I was, oh, I was, the area of Alaska. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that area. God, <laughs> bloody hell. Right? Just pay a little bit of attention. A little bit more. <laughs> In 1981, he was ready for another stint of solo Alaskan outback living. That's what they call it, I think. Thank you. They, the valley he was keen on was so isolated uh, from the outside world that it didn't have a name, and he also had to be flown in. You couldn't get there by Jeep Wrangler. Okay, so like what? That. To be, you know, if you're going to be specific, or other, or any other make, to be honest. What about okay. a Hummer? Hummer. I'll have to check. I didn't look that up. I'll have to check that. What about, a, check. what about a hovercraft? Oh, uh, getting warmer. Yeah. What about a plane? Yes. Yes! Yeah, definitely okay. a plane. But what do you tell the pilot if you want to go somewhere that doesn't have a name? Yeah, that's tricky. You that just, is tricky. They, you that's... just say the Alaska area. Yeah. You know. Okay, and, right. And, I understand now. Okay, and you, you wink. You give him a big you old a wink, wink. And he's like, got it. <laughs> Puts he in was the a, coordinates. A guy who knew the area pretty well said, don't go there. Um, there's no migrating animals, and that's what you go on there to photographer. <laughs> Was that a direct quote? <laughs> yeah, it's an Alaskan dialect. They, they do, do it, it a little differently up there. If I say anything weird, that's why. Um, <laughs> so, so his pilot, Roger Mayer, dropped him at his campsite on the Nameless Lake in the Nameless Valley as the winter of 1980 to 81 was turning into spring. So they were coming out of, out of a long winter, and that's when he set down there. He wanted to document the area through his camera lens. He wanted to check out the wildlife and the natural beauties, I guess. <laughs> Just like you two. And he... Um... Dave, quick, look beautiful. <sighs> I didn't have to move. <laughs> have to move. Well played. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, all right. I was like, all right, it's going to take a good 10 to 15, so everybody get comfy. <laughs> So he, so he was there, he was there for, for his camera, right? So he brought a bunch of camera gear, uh, also brought 500 rolls of film. This is in the days before digital cameras. That's, hey? that's too many. Can you believe it? <laughs> Interesting fact early. That's too many rolls of film. There's a lot of rolls of that's film. That's a lot of rolls of film. Uh, he also brought a tent. I think that was smart. 1,400 pounds of food, including five gallon buckets of rice, beans and wheat as well as guns with ammunition. Oh, Jesus Christ. I think Christ. you, you want to bring both of those, one without the other. <laughs> it's pretty silly. Uh, so he was well prepared to stay, uh, and he was planning to stay until August, so five-ish five, five -ish months again, um, though nothing was set in stone. He didn't have, he didn't have anything locked down as, as an exit date or anything like that. He also kept a journal, um, and it was on loose-leaf paper. It ended up being about 100 pages long, so the, most of this report comes from that that journal. Are you going to do a voice? I don't know. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> let's find out together. Let me know. Let me know if I've done a voice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's done a voice. <laughs> the journal was found by Alaska State Troopers next to his body in February the following year. Right. So, 
Oh, that's the death part. And so completes my report. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so it ended up, he wanted to leave there late August and he was found dead in February. It's a fucking difficult word. <laughs> Could have been any other month. <laughs> March, I can do that. Uh, the early... <laughs> Say late, it was late Feb, so it could have been March. Oh, Feb's good as well. I'm gonna say Feb Just if that Feb. comes up again. Feb's great. Fucking hell. February. Nope. Uh, the early diary entries describe animals returning from their winter hibernation with McCunny commenting. <laughs> I'd love to hear his comments on animals. Humans are so out of their modern oh, diary. Okay. <laughs> 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 Where's this guy from again? I don't know what that. Where? It sounded German. like Texas. It sounded like Mr. Bean. It did sound like Mr. Bean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me try again. I think this quote needs to be said in a certain voice. Humans are so out of their modern-day <laughs> element in a place like this. So I don't know if that'll follow on, but anyway, I think that's that's how I, that was my read of it. <laughs> my interpretation. <laughs> Some sort of valley girl. Yeah, that's it. he's in the valley. In the unknown valley girl. <laughs> he's an unnamed valley girl. Uh, he saw seahawks. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he saw hawks. Would have been probably weird for them to be... Anyway, he saw hawks. He saw the Seattle Seahawks gridiron team. <laughs> he saw ravens. He saw a moose splashing around in the lake. Thought about shooting it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But with a camera or a gun? <laughs> You'd think camera. He did do with the camera and he thought about it with a gun, but he couldn't see antlers, so he goes, just in case, it's a woman moose. <laughs> <laughs> just in case, it's a woman who looks incredibly like a moose. <laughs> I don't shoot women moose. I've always said that. I think everyone should live... Yeah, he genuinely wrote that in his... Ca not his calendar, his... Whatever that fucking... <laughs> the journal. God damn it. Anyway, it sounded, like, it sounded great. It sounded like a beautiful, beautiful experience. Like it was, it was there. He was doing, living it. He was doing it. He was doing it. You just keep looking. You keep looking past me to Dave. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, I look in Dave's eyes. It feels like everything's going to be okay. That's true. <laughs> when I look in your eyes, madness is all I see. <laughs> yeah, it's about right. Uh, so he was, he was taking photos and documenting what he saw. He was having a, a bloody great time, uh, to be honest. <laughs> But you guys aren't here to hear about the good times. <laughs> no, no, we are. We <laughs> no, that's no, no, no. Sh 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 sh. Okay. So, so let's skip ahead a few months to when McCunn was starting to realise that the pilot who he'd made loose plans to come back to collect him in August wasn't going to arrive. Oh, this is what he wrote. Did he get a text? <laughs> Running late. <laughs> and it was L eight. <laughs> Be there in mid Feb. <laughs> Yeah, because he couldn't, he couldn't type out February. Oh. Oh, who could even say it? <laughs> so this, this is when he was starting to realise that. He wrote in his journal, I think I should have... <laughs> I think I... like he, he's lost a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he has, yeah. I think I should have used more foresight about arranging my departure. I'll soon find out. I'm down to, be <laughs> I'm down to beans now, just over a gallon. That may not last two weeks. I finished my rice yesterday. You just got a gallon of beans. How am I? I that sounds Fuck like a lot to me. How, how my, I picture that as like a barrel. Oh, wait. Have you got some cheese and some, like, uh, you know, some bread? That could be all right. Maybe some guac. Oh, a bit of guac. No, he didn't have any oh, of that. Oh, no, that's gross then. Just, just, the, just the beans. If you can't make quesadillas. <laughs> and I can't. What's the point of living? Good, very good point. I knew you were there to make the good point. All right. <laughs> Running low on provisions, uh, he realised that he was... beans. Be running low on beans. <laughs> he realised that he was going to have to rely more heavily on hunting s to survive. <laughs> You've got a big fan of beans up the back on him. I mean, it's a 4.30 show. <laughs> what are you doing? Let's fucking get around it, yeah! No. 
Uh, can a I have a sensible show can for I, learning. Do you mind if I have a quick guess as to who that was? Was that Mr. John Perkins? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a loose unit. Um, don't engage, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so... And a glass just hits here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was Dad, yep. He's <laughs> got a bloody good arm, Johnny. Uh, so, yeah, so he realised he was going to have to rely more on hunting to survive. Uh, and then he wrote... I mean, he don't get down to two litres of beans and then think, I probably should have shot something. I mean... But not a lady moose. <laughs> a he, loose. He, he, he did... <laughs> They're not all winners, okay? <laughs> Comedy's hit and miss. I was, I was just about I'm to say... I'm doing my best. <laughs> this, is a, this is a... I'm trying to teach Sorry. people Sorry. lessons about death. Um, <laughs> stop making light of it. Uh, so, yeah, so he realised he was going to have to... Uh, he did regret not killing that moose later on. Did he um, write that? Yeah, he wrote that. He said, I wish I killed that fucking moose. <laughs> What he said. Man, I, what wish he, that, I hope said. they are my final words. But, uh, <laughs> I wish I killed that fucking moose. <laughs> bang. I, that I, assume bang? That I assume I've been shot by yeah. the moose. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when he was when he was starting to realise he needed to do some hunting, right? He wrote this. He goes, "I keep thinking of all the shotgun shells I threw away about two months ago." <laughs> <laughs> Had five boxes. And when I kept seeing them sitting there, I felt rather silly for having brought so many. I felt like a real warmonger, so I threw them away. <laughs> Apparently he chucked them into the lake. Does this feel a bit like a Burke and Wills for you? Like, is this... It's like Burke and Wills, but somehow dumber. Yeah. <laughs> so... No, don't say that. <laughs> He threw away the bullets with all that food that I decided I didn't need. <laughs> he, he, he kept a handful of bullets. He kept some bullets, oh, but good. he just chucked out most of them. <laughs> because, like, he could have buried them or just put them over there. He chucked them into the lake. <laughs> what a maniac. Couldn't believe it. Oh, better than chucking him into a fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, his journal was becoming less meticulous. Uh, early on, it was all neat block letters, but as it went That's on, it was... just capitals. Like, Hungry! <laughs> yeah. uh, by this was bad idea! <laughs> by mid-org, he was... <laughs> <laughs> he he wasn't, uh, wasn't even dating his entries anymore. He just really bloody lost it, Dave. So how do we know it was mid-org? Yeah, well, that's a bloody estimate, mate. Um, uh, he was now having to spend a large portion of his days searching for food. Uh, he was shooting ducks and musk, uh, muskrats with, with the few bullets he had left. And according to a New York Times report, was even drying the meat of a caribou that died in the lake. So he was, he was making it work. Okay. Caribou, I think, is like... Is that reindeer in Australia? It's an Australian reindeer, isn't it? We've got a well, yes. You said yes to Australian reindeer, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> Ooh, boy. It was meant to be joke anger, and it just felt... Felt real, didn't it? <laughs> it felt real. Uh, he was feeling increasingly anxious, uh, writing, Come on, please, don't leave me hanging and fretting like this. I didn't come out here for that. Which I found surprising, because when I visit Alaskan wilderness, I go for the hanging, but I stay for the fretting. <laughs> that was the closest thing to a joke that I wrote in this report. And when, when you wrote that, what noise did you make afterwards? I went, oh, there's no time. Keep writing. <laughs> Show's about to start. <laughs> uh, he sort of yo-yoed between blaming himself and blaming his friends for his predicament. He wondered why... Okay, what? <laughs> How? I can't believe my friend Keith threw all my bullets in the river. What a <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> Fuck you, Keith. Like, how is it anyone how is else's it fault? anyone's fault? Before he left, he, he labelled uh, on multiple maps his location and, and sent them to his family and friends. And he's like, surely they'd be wondering where I am by now. Surely they could have sent someone to have a look. Right? But it turns out he said stuff to family and friends like, I don't know when I'll be back. Um, <sighs> don't worry about me if I'm a bit late and stuff like that. So... <laughs> 
So you can sort of understand why they were confused. Um, but back in his hometown, his uh, friends were starting to become concerned and they contacted the Alaska State Troopers to see if they would go and check in on him, and they did. A uh, trooper named David Hamilton set off to fly over McCunn's camp to check on him. When McCunn heard the aeroplane overhead, it must have been such a sweet sound. Like, he's like, I've been saved. This is so good. He grabbed his sleeping bag, which was orange, which is the apparently some sort of a international colour for um, fucked or something. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was swinging it around his head, right? Um, and then the... Uh, and then he tried to get the pilot's attention, which he did. In his journal, though, he wrote this, he wrote, Unfortunately, it was on wheels and couldn't land. Um, so I stopped waving it after its first pass, then got busy packing things up and getting ready to break camp. So he's like, they've seen me. They'll come back. They've got wheels, so they need the sled thing or whatever to land. They'll so come back with an appropriate plan yeah. for me. <laughs> um, so so uh, while he was waiting, McCunn kept packing his camp down while he waited for the pilot to organise a plane with appropriate landing gear to arrive. But as the hours passed by, he started to wonder if the plane was going to return at all riding. As sunset approached, I began to doubt if the pilot took me serious. I certainly hope he, doesn't, he didn't think that, I'm, uh, that me having stopped waving meant I thought he might have been someone else at first or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my God. No, this is good for the gene pool. Get rid of him. <laughs> The, the plane never did return, and realising this a few days later, McCunn was saddened, or in his words, totally disappointed, bummed out, and somewhat worried. <laughs> du- that's a direct quote from our Valley Boy. Um, I'm, really gla- I'm glad he died, because he would be terrible on Twitter. He would be really, really annoying. <laughs> he's, writing so. that he's, he's actually a really nice writer, but anyway. I think he was a truck driver by trade. A truck driver. <laughs> yes! Is that true? I think so. I I read that in one place, all right? I'm not going to put my life on it, but I think so. Uh, It wasn't until later, so so he's now a bit despondent. He's like, fucking plane. They obviously misunderstood me, right? But it wasn't until later when he noticed the distress signal guide printed on his hunting licence that he figured out what happened. This is what he said. I recall riding my right hand, shoulder high, shaking my fist on on the plane's second pass. It was like a cheer, like what you would do when your team scored a touchdown or something. Turns out that's the signal for all okay, do not wait. <laughs> so, what's, sorry, talk us through, what's the signal again? <laughs> Fist pumping is, I'm all good. <laughs> yeah, apparently. apparently. Um, so then he went on to say a sentence that maybe is the weirdest one of the report. He said, they probably blew me off as a weirdo. <laughs> Obviously, I've, I've never heard it in that context before. Um, it's Far cer- out. He said, it's certainly my fault I'm here now. Exclamation mark. Bloody hell, mate. Um, probably be another five months before another plane passes over. He was actually about 50 miles from the, the nearest uh, plane route. So there was, it was very unlikely that a plane would just fly overhead. So if it, if it was coming, it would be on purpose, you know. And that one was looking for him. That one was looking for him, oh, yes. For, oh. But they saw him do a fist pump and went... He's all right. Oh, good. They also saw that he had heaps of firewood stacked up. Uh, his tent was there. Heaps of beans. Yeah, they, they, they saw a river full of bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. No one Keep who going. is in trouble throws their bullets away. Yeah, exactly. He's got too many bullets. <laughs> So when he when he realised when he realised that he'd accidentally made the signal for fuck off I'm alright he goes <laughs> he he wrote I really feel like a klutz <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what a, that must have been that's got to be one of the worst roller coaster rides of emotion ever going <laughs> I'm saved oh, oh. no <laughs> <laughs> yeah a real roller coaster you know those roller coasters you're on where you're like whoa oh, no. <laughs> On again. Uh, The weather was now getting harsher. The lake froze over, so we're moving back into winter months. And he was having to compete with foxes and wolves for food. Things were getting colder and more miserable for McCunn. And he was writing, or wrote, It's been a terrible day for me and I won't go into it. This 
Oscar. <laughs> what was he? What was he I'm hoping for? Come back around. He's the best. <laughs> Was he hoping like some sort of one of the foxes would come up and be like, nah, mate, tell us about it. <laughs> Are you all right? He's an attention-seeking teenager. I'm not talking about it. Yeah. I'm not talking about it. <laughs> no, I'm fine. <laughs> There's no one there. Oh, he's the best. I'm he, on Team McCunny now. <laughs> he, 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 he wrote that he's, uh, he's getting more fr- frostbitten every day and he only had beans left, which he'd, we'd already mentioned. <laughs> he said, he honestly, he was scared for his life, but I won't give up, he said. I That's won't give line. up. Yeah. He started... Been listening to a lot of pink. Yeah. <laughs> he's feeling very motivated. <laughs> She's very motivated. I was going to say, he's pink motivational. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then he kept thinking, I am going to come up and get this party started. <laughs> <laughs> only pink song I could think of. It really was. It was the only one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Charlie's Angels soundtrack? No, they don't, knew the song, Dave. Don't leave me hanging on this one. <laughs> Everyone I feel like I've disappointed all the fucking Pink fans. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I am. I'm really sorry. I am. He started setting up traps to catch rabbits and squirrels, and the traps worked, but often by the time he got there to collect the carcasses, he found that he was beaten there by a wolf or a fox, and they only left <laughs> rabbit feet or heads. <laughs> Which are lucky. <laughs> and that's what he had to eat. Um, With the note said, sucked in, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he also he coordinated a squirrel one time, uh, writing that he didn't find it very satisfying, saying it was only a tease. Even when you chew... <laughs> Is there, it's only a tease, meaning for like hunger wise, only a tease that it would fill him up. Alright, then use the word snack. <laughs> he said, even, even when you chew and swallow all the bones ah. too. Oh. So he was getting pretty desperate, I guess, by this stage. Um, he wrote of shooting and eating a fox, eating all parts, including the tongue, heart, and liver. What The guy who wrote about this, he goes, Inclu- as well as all the normal parts of the body. <laughs> I like that, that that guy thinks of a heart as being an abnormal part of a body. All right. Uh, things got so desperate that he ate his condiments, including s- including salt, pepper, and thyme. Uh, I was no, certain you were going to no. say he ate uh, all his condoms. I was certain. I was certain. No. <laughs> Which makes uh, thyme look a lot uh, nicer to me. Yeah. He, it really does. He, said, he said he ate the condiments even though he knew they wouldn't be very filling. He was just trying to let his stomach know that he was still there. <laughs> it knows! <laughs> so he ate the salt. He ate the salt. Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic idea. Eat a bunch of salt. He even he started peeling bark off trees and eating that. But now yeah. he doesn't have any condiments to put on it. <laughs> Salt yeah, on bark why, is delicious. Why, yeah. Surely you spread the condiments out. Don't eat them in... Don't shot them. That's weird. Oh, oh. He was starting to have dizzy spells, saying, I feel miserable. Have had the chills upon awakening for the past three days. I but I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I can't take much more of this. <laughs> can't stop thinking about using the bullet. Oh, no. Oh, Matt. <laughs> you guys know how this ends, right? <laughs> Fuck, sorry, all right. Big surprise coming. (laughs) Three happy topics is what you promised. Uh, Life was becoming grim for McCunn, I would say. (laughs) That's that's my own editorialising there, but I think I'm I'm going out on a limb there. Uh, He was running out of faith and the will to go on, writing, fell to my knees today on the lake and begged God's help and mercy. I'm sure he heard me, but I don't know if he should have any reason to want to help. Yeah, that's... I feel so many things right now. I know, like, the human part of me is like, this poor bastard, and the other part's like, oh! Because, you know, if you knew him in real life, he'd just suck so much. Oh. Just be oh, you know, such I, a I sook. mean, he's, he's in a pretty tough... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was only one person that put him in that yeah. tough situation. Yeah. 
Um, Art. It, Mm. Yeah, his his friend Keith. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Keith. The weather the weather deteriorated further, and so did his will to live. Uh, he was out of food, and with a fire burning, the last fuel that he had, McCunn wrote his final journal entry. Oh God. And burning the last of my emergency Coleman light, and just fed the fire the last of my split wood. When the ashes cool, I'll be cooling along with them. So he's like quite a great writer. That's a really nice line, right? Isn't that kind no. of beautifully written? <laughs> you heard that groan, yeah? I thought that was the groan of delight. You, <laughs> you did this to us. Oh, look, he's not done. He's still talking. Let, him, let the man speak. It's his last words and you're bloody even still talking over him. Female privilege, am I right? <laughs> Yeah, everyone looked at your face, <laughs> waiting for the regret. I was really counting on, uh, on, on, our, on our great listeners and their understanding of irony. <laughs> but I was disappointed yet again, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> he, went, he went on to say, I chickened out once already, but I don't want to go through the chills again. They say it doesn't hurt, and people who, who have died and been revived <laughs> recall a relaxed and wonderful free-floating feeling. Dear God in heaven, I don't know why he's writing to God in his journal. God anyway, make, dear God, God in heaven, anything. please forgive me my weakness and my sins. Suicide's a sin. Please look over. He didn't write that. Please look over. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote that in very small writing. <laughs> please look over my family, huh? Selfless. Why are you justifying it to me? Because I don't I'm know. on Team McCunny. Oh, you are too. He also wrote a message to his father, attaching it to his driver's license to help identify him, I, I assume. Um, <laughs> you wrote, I assume. Shut the fuck <laughs> shut, shut up. <laughs> I read whatever is written. <laughs> I, I don't, look, that was, that was a matter of hours ago and I don't recall that, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote through the night. I lost hope in, in stages. Uh, so much so that I threw some pens in the lake. <laughs> Riff King, all right. Uh, in the note, he left his belongings to his father and also said that whoever found him could take his guns as some sort of reward, I guess. Gee, thanks. W was that... This, I killed myself with this. <laughs> <laughs> Yours now. <laughs> What, but was that written in someone else's handwriting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give the guy who found me, uh, just give him the guns. It says here I could take these guns. Yeah. <laughs> he also left me his house and his wife. <laughs> ah, you read, you, the, you've already, you read ahead. <laughs> uh, in Feb, thank you, 1982. 1982, Jess? A good year. Some of you have been waiting for that and now can leave. <laughs> the rest of the show is... See ya. Uh, approximately two to three months after his final note, Alaska state troopers found his uh, tent zipped up. They cut into it and found McCunn's emaciated and frozen body. So they didn't use the zip. <laughs> I had... I had the exact same thought. I mean, uh, if, if he's still in there, they've just destroyed a man's tent. <laughs> This building has a door, we better blow up the side of it. That's amazing. And with the knife, they cut into him as they ripped it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, no, I that thought, was already I, there. I'm assuming it was frozen over or something, but they did not make mention of that. So yeah, good, <laughs> good question, well asked, well done. Um, so they, and the journal was just sitting right there next to him, obviously, um, that's where he would have left it. Didn't have time to move it after the end. Um, <laughs> Uh, according to the New York Times, he died in a wilderness camp near a nameless lake in a nameless valley, 225 miles Somebody northeast of Somebody named the lake. Feels like he probably deserves it as much as anyone. Is, it, un named is it named after him now? As far as I know, it's still unnamed. Lake oh, McCunn. Actually, no, to be honest, uh, this article I'm referencing was from 1982, so... <laughs> <laughs> things may have changed. Uh, in... In the journal, he also named Rory Crookshank as the man he had expected to return to take him home. Oh, oh. Name and 
shame. <laughs> huh, Rory? <laughs> Where were you? Um, so, yeah, apparently they discussed it uh, before he left. Um, uh, and this all led to a, the, coroner, uh, the coroner's <coughs> inquest, which found that Cookshank was innocent of any responsibility. During the inquest, multiple witnesses testified that no plans were locked in for Cookshank to return to collect McCunn. Um, so it's, it's interesting, right? He, he really did plan out his trip really meticulously, everything he brought along. He seemed like he really knew what he was doing. Parts of the story that I didn't mention, he, he like uh, built his own bed. Uh, when the weather was turning, he knew to dig four feet down to make some sort of a trench. Uh, he he um, didn't kill a, a moose. Uh, there's lots of <laughs> lots of things. Yeah, I just didn't. Um, no, there yeah, was like there was a bunch of stuff that flight. made me think like, oh, this this guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> but yeah, the return flight feels fairly important. Yeah, like I reckon it's even you know it's it's pretty courageous to get a one-way ticket to Europe or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, no way. Could, what if you rang out of cash? Rang out of cash? All right. Um, <laughs> nearly at the end here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he planned out his trip so meticulously, even uh, marking his campsite on those maps, sending them to friends. But saying, don't worry about it. But failed to organise what I would argue is one of the key elements of a successful trip like this, and that was to get away home. Mm. Right. Agree with me there? I um, mean, I literally said that... <laughs> About a minute ago, so, yep. But do you agree with me? <laughs> uh, he seemed to think that the plans had been made, though. Um, he, he wrote so in the journal, obviously, that he thought... Um, you would, though, wouldn't you? But he, like, you'd blame someone else. Maybe, but you're going to die anyway, so surely, you, why would you push that guilt on us? So someone? you look like a hero. Oh, well, it, this guy comes off very heroically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, He's nailed that, hasn't he? But, but, a, but apart from those things, it sounds like he was a bit confused because he also wrote in his journal uh, that Cookshank told me not to count on his help as he may be in Anchorage working. <laughs> what? Hang on, what? He told... He said in his own journal that Cookshank had told him not to count on him because he may be away working. <laughs> okay, and then when he was blaming at the end, did he say... Uh, ignore page 86. <laughs> redacted, redacted, yeah. He's not crossing that out. <laughs> he may be away. He may be away. Wow. Uh, the coroner also found that McCunn's death was a suicide, um, which I, I felt like that was a bit of an, an open and, and shut sort of case. Um, <laughs> obviously, he was, in a, he was in an area, he died of a, a bullet wound, and he was in an area without any other human. So unless it was the moose... <laughs> <laughs> Say it into the. M I hope that picked it up. That's good stuff. Had to be the. It had to be the moose. Yeah, but he spared the moose. Yeah, that would you have know? been real dog act by the moose. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the wolf. I mean, I mean, he also could have blamed this Crookshank bloke and said, "Crookshank's got a gun to my head. Oh no, he's gonna kill me." <laughs> dot dot dot. And he'd be like, "Fucking got him. Fucking got him." <laughs> And then, but then his mistake was that he wrote, bang, I'm dead now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what gave it away. <laughs> um, at, the, at the time, McCunn's dad, uh, Donovan, said, if anything comes of his death, it will be to caution other people not to get in the same circumstances. If only we can keep one person from going through what that kid went through, it'll all be worth it. He didn't say that last bit. Surely he would never have thought it would be worth it, but... <laughs> Fuck well, it done? just, I mean, it was just. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that, that is my report on the death of Carl McCunn. <laughs> kind of off the mat. Uh, you, could, you could argue, and some, some might. I don't know, so you could argue. Oh, now was, you look at me. It was a little dark in parts. <laughs> right. So I thought I'd, I'd end the show, or at least the report, with some fun facts. Uh, these fun facts are about the state of Alaska. There's no... <laughs> There's no fun facts about McCann, I'm afraid. Let's go bigger, let's go broader, all right? So Alas Alaska, the funnest state of all! Yeah. Fun Alaskan <laughs> facts. Are you pumped? I'm excited. Obviously, I'm Jess decides what's fun facts yep. and what's not, but um, I'm pretty confident of these ones. 
Here are my fun facts. All right, how about this one? <laughs> it is illegal to whisper in someone's ear while they are moose hunting in Alaska. <laughs> fun fact. <laughs> I honestly assumed that was an earthquake. Legit, it went, I went, all right. Be calm. Oh, okay. Seriously, I thought it was a fucking earthquake. How did you have that ready so fast? <laughs> this is like the time he played Anastasia. <laughs> he is good. He is, he is very, one of very the best good in Webby. the biz. And Thanks, in, in his defense, when he played Anastasia, I also assumed it was some sort of earthquake. It was, <laughs> It was crazy, Danny. Okay. Oh my god! So All right. you can't you can't whisper in someone's ear, but what if you're whispering? I think it's a lady moose. <laughs> That's important. Yeah. That's important. Or, or like, <laughs> don't shoot. It's a child. <laughs> like, Darren. <laughs> suddenly, I'm going to jail for whispering. <laughs> it's a fuck state. I told you that. I told you that. <laughs> so, just to be clear, are we going to hear that earthquake sound every time that there's a fuck? No, we're not. We're, let, we're not... No promises either way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all find out together. <laughs> yeah, was the fact fun? That was fun. I'd say that's pretty fun. That's pretty fun. I haven't had a fun fact that got the fun approval from you in a long time. I'm a tough judge. My... My the way I figure it out though is like, would I tell that at a dinner party? Because I get a lots of dinner parties, you see. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> I'm sophisticated. I mean, you fucks. <laughs> you probably won't tell that fact now, just in case some sort of earthquake sound <laughs> immediately follows it. It's very triggering. It to me. summons an earthquake. <laughs> All right, next fun fact. Next alleged fun fact. Uh, Alaska has the lowest population density of any state in America. If New York City had, had the same population nah, density of, as Alaska, <laughs> only 16 people would be living in Manhattan. That's not fun. Fun fact! That is amazing! <laughs> he didn't even turn it down. You knew it was coming and some people still visibly recoiled. <laughs> How come you're now judging if they're fun or not? That, that is for only 16 people would live in Manhattan. That's amazing. Yeah, that's isn't that fun? What a fun time! <laughs> I did. I considered making them all dull like that, but I, had, <laughs> I found too many good ones. These last two are crackers. All right. <laughs> all right. You ready for another one? Ready. Oh, yeah, so you're saying that was not? That was not fun. Okay. One from two. Pretty happy with that. Here we go. <laughs> the Alaskan town of Talkeetna had a cat named Stubbs as its honorary mayor for 15 years. <laughs> Fun fact! Yes! <laughs> yes. Yes, that is a fun fact. Look at him, little mayor! Little cat mayor! How do you do, mayor? Some... He's sitting at his desk! <laughs> it's very fucking good. fucking paperwork all day! Oh, I'm under the pub. I'm the mayor! <laughs> That's a sitcom, nobody else do it. <laughs> I'm writing it. I've got a question. Was he voted out or did he die? <laughs> 15 years, did you say 15 years? 15 is pretty yeah, good. I think he died. died. I think he probably died. No, there's a, there's a rule in that town, you can only do um, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's reasonable. It's yeah. now a, another cat. All right. Um. You couldn't think of another animal. <laughs> I, c I could. Go on now, do one. <laughs> I, think, I mean, I'm thinking moose, but it feels like moose has been done. Okay. <laughs> what, cats and... Yeah, having a moose mess. <laughs> give, me, just give me another lead in, let's see how we go okay, here. Okay, um... <laughs> it's raining, cats and... Daesh! <laughs> 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 it was worth a bloody shot, all right. <laughs> Uh, Last one. That, that joke, we can tell who actually listens to the Patreon shout-outs at the end of our oh, show yeah. and who skips those. So, now this area here, everyone else absolutely skips that every week. So, there you go. It's also the name of the guy who was suggested this topic, Matt Doche. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for doing that, Matt. 
Dice. That sounds like you're talking to yourself. <laughs> Good job, Matt. You're the best one. Our on the final. Podcast, here's the Matt. last final fact. JP. Sorry, I was Popper. just talking, but all right. Yep. I'll take it from here. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Feminism. <laughs> well, sorry, what were you saying? No, it doesn't matter. Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't like it when we fight, do they? Lucky we never do. <laughs> Final uh, possible fun fact. Yes. Uh, apparently it is, a, it is legal to shoot bears in Alaska. Mm-hmm. But not Lady Moose. Not Lady Moose. Oh my God. I wish that was, that's so, oh. much, <laughs> so much more fun than this. No, go on. All right, I'm gonna incorporate that in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> his Everyone mem- just, his just memory, take five. Memory's very small. <laughs> Great, let's okay. see, all right, let's see what this one is. Okay. <laughs> you guys are seeing comedy happen live. Last one. <laughs> Amazing. You forgot to do inverted commas. Comedy. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> last p- potential fun fact here. Apparently it is legal to shoot bears in Alaska, but waking a sleeping bear to take a photograph of them is prohibited, as is shooting Lady Moose. <laughs> <laughs> fun fact! And, and that is the end of the report. Uh, well done, Matthew! Round of applause! <laughs> Give it to Webby. <laughs> I think the highlight for me was the earthquake sound. <laughs> that was so terrifying. <laughs> but I feel like we've, we've all learned a lot today, especially uh, not what not to do in Alaska. <laughs> So if one person can learn from this, remember what his dad said. Yeah. It'll all be worth it that my kid is dead. (laughs) (laughs) That whole family's fucked. You're paraphrasing there, to be honest. (laughs) Dave, you gonna wrap this shit up or what? Well, uh... (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, if you will allow me to wrap this shit up. Uh, That is the, uh, basically the end of our first, uh, live podcast here. But before we go, we should tell you that we are doing the next three Saturdays here. That's right. Give me a round of applause if you're going to come to all three. All right, front row, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. We'll see these guys next week. <laughs> all right. We should also... Do a season pass. Uh, ah, you, do you have one? <laughs> <laughs> front row and this guy, all right. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, everyone who has bought a season pass. And uh, people at home, if you're thinking uh, you'd like to come on down, please do. In, uh, the next three Saturdays at 4.30. Matt, you're also doing your live stand-up show for the next... Three weeks? Yes, seven o'clock and six o'clock on Sundays at the Chinese Museum. I've got flyers for those here today. Please come along. Uh, discount code with do go on. Um, also, if you're up for a show, people in the room, I'll probably edit this out, but friend Nick Kappa's uh, doing a show uh, at Belleville. I think he's got he's here with flyers, and it's, I saw it the other night. It's fucking sick. Um, <laughs> in every sense of the word, it is. <laughs> It is disgusting, but it's a very good show. I, I believe the sh- believe the show is called Quantum Bad Boy. It is, yeah. Is. <laughs> very good. Uh, and <laughs> and also Dave's Dave's doing his show Monday nights this week. This is only for those in the room as well, because it'll be out. Oh yeah! By the time everyone hears this, Jess and Matt will have already been on my blind dating show this Monday at nine o'clock at the Melbourne Town Hall, and they will have blindly dated an audience member through a curtain, and we may have finally found them some love. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but if you do want to come down to that one, you guys here, or to people at home, the next two Mondays after that, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. So please, please do come along. Do. And tickets for all these shows are at comedyfestival.com.au. Now, Jess, would you like to plug something just for fun? Um, <laughs> is a, um, a great uh, series on Netflix. Um, <laughs> great. I've been watching. Uh, What's it that's not true. I don't have time to watch Netflix. I don't do much. When are you on the ra- when are you on the radio? <laughs> just, I, I probably thought you'd talk about how you're on Triple J, but anyway. Um, nah. <laughs> all good. Uh, check out Netflix.com. All right. Um, it's so good. Uh, before we go, can we have a uh, big round of applause to Shane Dunlop for recording these on film? Thank you, Shane. <laughs> Jeremy Webb on tech. Thank you, Webby. Hey, Webby. He's the earthquake guy. <laughs> 
Uh, thanks to Carl Chandler for organising all this. A million great podcasts uh, down here at the European Beer Cafe, so please do check those out. But until next week, we'll say thank you and I'll say goodbye. goodbye. Bye. Also, thank you, Bianca Pradler. Yeah, thank you, Bianca, too. Bye bye. <laughs>